Hello students, this is Professor Vincent Osaya. Welcome to my class. This is the presentation of uh, part three of chapter three. As you know, chapter three zero in on three issues. Number one, we are talking about uh, audit planning. Number two, types of audit test. And number three, uh, match reality. Now, talking about uh, planning, which is number one of three issues that we are zeroing in on chapter three, we left off by talking about related parties, uh, 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 searching for related parties transactions as one of the things we do during the uh, planning stage of the audit. Now, let's take a look at uh, another important issue relating to planning and audit. Additional value added uh, services. Now, what does that mean? Uh, during the course of doing an audit, it is also possible that uh, the auditor The auditor can come across a situation whereby additional uh, 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 service or services uh, could be provided for the client. In such circumstance, uh, the auditor will bring it to the uh, client attention and they will agree upon it. And uh, here are some of the services that we do sometimes perform in addition to, in addition to the audit engagement. And of course, Publicly traded companies are limited. Uh, auditors that uh, audit publicly, that audit publicly traded companies are limited in the types of consulting services that they can uh, provide. So moving along, let's take a look at uh, documenting audit strategy, audit plan, and audit programs. <clears throat> we said part of the planning process is we have to document. Uh, or put in writing what the audit strategy is, uh, the big picture approach as we discussed, uh, what is the audit plan, detailed, specific things that we need to do to get the audit on, and also, and also the audit programs. We did not talk about the audit program, but the audit program is very important for you to know. We are going to talk more about that uh, uh, in due course. But I want you to know right now from the outset that the audit programs consist of specific audit procedures that the auditors put together in testing some management assertions. So let's back up. So what are audit procedures? We said that any act performed by the auditor is considered an audit procedure. Basically, everything that the auditor does is an audit procedure so if you put together six seven audit procedures or six seven things you are going to do to audit accounts receivable or inventory we call that six seven uh, uh, procedures as audit program so audit program consists of a set of audit procedures for uh, that the auditors use to audit uh, some management assertions as they relate to a particular uh, account. So we document the overall audit strategy and the audit plan, which involves the following. So we are going to talk about uh, the nature, timing, and extent of the test. What kind of test are we going to embark on or are we going to perform? The timing of the test. and the extent, how much of it. So the auditor ensures that they have addressed the risks that they identify and they talk about the auditor's preliminary decision concerning control risk, determine the level of control test. So how much of this you are going to do depends on your previous uh, assessments as we previously uh, discussed. Now, let's take a look at a sample of uh, documentation of audit strategy, audit plan, and uh, audit uh, uh, program. I know you are not able to see this uh, uh, very well, but if you take a look at your uh, textbook, let us go ahead and zero in on the uh, last part of this documentation. Take a look at this. Uh, the uh, 
the second column, business risk, it talks about foreign currency risk. So now the account that relates to or the assertion that relates to would be for this company the possible gains and losses from currency hedging. So here comes the valuation and accuracy issue. And the audit risk is it is possible that the calculations of this uh, foreign, uh, foreign currency uh, uh, calculation could be wrong. So uh, we take a look at uh, the controls in place and uh, we also take a look at the effect on the audit uh, plans. So we are going to talk more about this in due course in terms of the audit strategy, audit plan and uh, audit uh, uh, programs in subsequent uh, chapters. So moving along, let's take a look at the uh, supervision of the audit. We said that the engagement partner or other auditor uh, with uh, more responsibility have to audit the junior staff, all right? So inform engagement team members of their responsibility. So everybody needs to know uh, who is responsible for what, so on and so forth. Now, there has to be a direct engagement team members to identify and, commit, uh, and communicate uh, audit issues. And of course, uh, someone has to be responsible for reviewing uh, the work of the engagement uh, team uh, members. So moving along, let's take a look at the second of the three issues of chapter three, and that is types of audit test. Essentially, every test that an auditor performs is one of three or all the tests that we are going to perform during the course of doing our audit can be put into one of these three categories the first one is risk assessment procedures the second one is a test of controls and the third one is a substantive procedures so let's take a look at the first type of test uh, risk assessment procedures. Like we, you remember, we talked about audit procedures. Audit procedure is an act performed by the auditor. So here we are talking about the procedures or the things that we do as an auditor in order to obtain an understanding of the company that we are auditing, the environment in which the company operates in, including its internal control. So, for example, if the company is auditing uh, McDonald's, we need to understand McDonald's as an entity. We need to understand the environment in which McDonald's operates, in this case, fast food industry. Then we also need to understand his internal control. So, whatever we do as auditor to have this understanding of these three things, they are considered risk assessment procedures. The second category, uh, those are tests of controls. So remember we talked about internal controls. Those are policies and procedures that we put together to make sure that employees are doing what they are supposed to do to make sure that the um, um, uh, employees are complying with rules and regulations. We have a whole chapter dealing with internal control uh, uh, in, subsequent, in subsequent chapters. So um, one big part of controls uh, is separation or segregation of duties, uh, which we already talked about uh, uh, previously. So here's a situation uh, whereby we actually uh, uh, make sure that one person uh, is not in a position to perpetrate fraud and also conceal it. So by, uh, because of that, we, we, we split uh, duties or segregate duties to different uh, parties. So. Those are controls that we put in place. The question is, are those controls actually working? As auditors, for a lot of reasons that we are going to talk about, we need to know whether those controls are working. How do we know that? We test those controls. So the audit procedures that we perform to test whether controls are working or not are called tests of controls. So they are directed towards the evaluation of the effectiveness of the design and operation of the internal controls. So we are testing what? Whether the controls are properly designed and whether they are being carried out effectively. 
So whatever procedure that we perform to make sure that, uh, uh, to make that evaluation or test of control. And the third one are the substantive procedures. Those are the procedures or the tests that the auditor perform uh, in order to detect material misstatement in individual account. For example, uh, accounts receivable or uh, rent expense. The question is, is that account materially misstated? How do you know? Of course, you have to roll up your sleeves and do a lot of testing to, uh, to make sure that those uh, accounts are not uh, materially misstated. Those tests that you perform are called substantive uh, procedures. So those are the three types of tests. So again, every test that we perform as auditor is one of these three. Moving along, let's take a look at the test of controls. Now, these are some procedures. Remember now we said audit procedure is an act performed by the auditor. So there are some of the procedures that we perform to test controls. Number one, inquiry. Just make inquiry, just ask questions, okay? Number two, we inspect document, observation. Just observing, walk through, re-performance. So these are some of the procedures that we perform or some of the tests that we uh, uh, engage in in order to test the effectiveness of the design and operation of internal uh, controls of the client. Now here are some examples of test of controls. Let's take a look at the last one. Here, the client has a control that says that sales invoices, we need to make sure that sales invoices agree with shipping documents and also the customer's order as to product type, price and quantity. In other words, if the customer order certain things and we have paperwork for the customer order, we need to make sure that the customer order is consistent with the invoice or with the bill that we are sending to the customer. We also need to make sure that the information in the uh, customer's order and shipping document are consistent, excuse me, with the sales in invoice, are also, the information is also consistent with the shipping document. So that, the, 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 the client has those control in place. Why? We want to make sure that if a customer place an order, for a lot of reasons, we want to make sure that if a customer place an order for XYZ, we are actually sending invoice to the customer for XYZ. So we want to make sure that those agree. Now, how do we, now that is, that is a control in place. And as an auditor, we might want to go ahead and take a sample of sales invoices, recompute the information to uh, 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 to test whether uh, uh, this uh, 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 information actually uh, agrees. So that is a test of controls. Now let's take a look at the substantive procedures. That is the third type of audit test. Okay. Now here we are talking about uh, two types. First of all, let's back up. Recall that we said that substantive procedures are procedures that the auditor embark on to test whether accounts are materially misstated. So we zero in on a particular account like inventory and perform some tests to make sure that they are not materially misstated. So we have two approaches of doing this. Number one, we have what we call test of details. So we test for errors of fraud in individual transaction account balances and disclosures. So we actually examine and evaluate a lot of documents and test and dig in into detail to see whether this account is materially misstated. That is one approach of substantive procedures. Alternatively, we can use another approach which we call analytical procedures. Now, what are analytical procedures? Here we say, these are evaluations of financial information through analysis of plausible relationships among financial and non-financial data. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. Uh, if a client monthly rent is $10,000, 
every month. That is financial information. You know that there are 12 months in a year. 12 months is a non-financial information or non-financial data. So what do you do? You multiply $10,000 by 12 months. That gives you $120,000. So you take a look at the income statement to see whether the client actually properly reflects $120,000 as rent expense. By so doing, look at what he said here. It's an evaluation of financial information through analysis of plausible relationships between financial and non-financial data. So we establish relationship between financial and non-financial data in order to get an insight into this particular matter. So one of these two approaches uh, 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 is perfectly okay when we are uh, testing whether a particular account is materially misstated or not. So that is the conclusion of uh, part three of chapter three.